They boo over Britain. Then, on August the 1st, 1940, Hitler told Goering to prepare for phase two of the battle, a massive air assault to crush Britain's air defenses. Goering was delighted. He could finally launch the strength of his bomber force against British industry and airfields. The start of phase two was given the code name Eagle Day. British intelligence warned that an attack was imminent. RAF pilots knew what was coming. They just didn't know when. On August the 13th, 1940, RAF fighter pilots received the call. Vast formations of German bombers were closing on Britain's south coast. Spitfires and hurricanes scrambled into a hastily organized departure. Eagle Day had arrived with all the fury and intensity of two nations at war. The Battle of Britain had begun. Over the English Channel, 40 Ju-87 Stukas were heading for the city of Southampton. The lumbering dive bombers were escorted by a squadron of BF-109s. The formation was spotted by a group of Spitfires flying overhead. With the afternoon sun at their backs, the Spitfire pilots tore through the fighter escort, savagely attacking the vulnerable dive bombers. Camera gun footage illustrates the fate of a Stuka being pursued by a Spitfire. Nine of the dive bombers were shot down, and the rest limped back to France. German commanders conceded that the Stuka was no match for the Spitfire. The shrieking dive bomber that wrought havoc over Europe was withdrawn from the Battle of Britain. Germany's BF 109 remained the RAF's most lethal adversary. But as the Luftwaffe stepped up its offensive, the fighter's greatest weakness was exposed. Its limited range allowed its pilots to fight over Britain for only 20 minutes. To provide long-range protection for his bombers, Hermann Goering turned to the twin-engined ME-110 destroyer. The destroyer had twice the range of the 109, but it was also slower, less maneuverable, and its size made it an easy target. Its performance against the Spitfire is best illustrated by this footage from a destroyer's camera gun. Here, the German chases a Spitfire over the British coastline. Just as he seems to have the British pilot in his sights, the Spitfire simply pulls away. The first major assault against Britain had mixed results. The Luftwaffe claimed to have shot down 70 planes. The actual figure was 13. The Germans lost 33 aircraft. But what frustrated German pilots most was that the RAF always seemed to know where the Luftwaffe was flying. The answer was, of course, radar. Yet the Germans never seemed to appreciate its importance. After only a few raids against British radar sites, Goering decided that further attacks were pointless. It was the greatest military blunder of the Battle of Britain. And on August the 15th, Goering's Luftwaffe would pay the price. That afternoon, Goering launched a massive bombing raid from German fighter bases in Denmark and Norway. Most of the fighting thus far had taken place in the south, Goering was convinced that a raid against northern England would take the RAF by surprise. It didn't. The German bombers were watched for over an hour by British radar. RAF pilots had time to get into an attack formation with the sun behind them. German pilots didn't see them coming. Stunned by the fury of the British attack, a formation of Heinkel 111s dropped their bombs before reaching the target. A second wave did make it to the target, 
only to be attacked relentlessly on their way home. Twenty-nine German aircraft were downed without the loss of a single RAF fighter. Yet German commanders still didn't realize the significance of British radar. The Battle of Britain wasn't proceeding the way Goering had planned. When he visited his fighter squadrons on August the 21st, the frustrated leader tore into his pilots. He called them cowards, blaming them for jeopardizing Hitler's planned invasion. Goering then gave his pilots free reign to bomb targets in all British cities except for one. Hitler wanted the British capital intact when it fell under German control. London was strictly off limits. On August 24th, over a hundred Luftwaffe bombers attacked the RAF's main fighter bases in the south. Manston airfield near Dover was completely destroyed. Further north, fighter bases at Ramsgate, North Weald and Hornchurch were pounded relentlessly. Hangars were destroyed, operations buildings were leveled and communication lines cut. When RAF fighters returned home, they had nowhere to land. The new German strategy was working. Hitler and Goering were delighted by the course of battle. The defiant RAF was reeling towards destruction. Hitler ordered that the invasion of England begin on September 21st. By the end of the month, a swastika would be raised over the British Houses of Parliament. RAF reconnaissance reported that an invading force of German troops was assembling along the French coast. The fate of Britain was in the hands of its beleaguered air force. Fighter Command Chief Hugh Dowding admitted that the RAF needed a miracle. Little did he know, he had already been given one. On the night of August the 24th, 1940, two German bombers got lost flying to their target. Met with stiff anti-aircraft fire, the Germans unloaded their bombs and headed for home. What the airmen didn't realize was that they had been flying over London. Neighborhoods were set ablaze and civilians were killed as they left pubs and theaters. For Londoners, it was a night of terror. For the RAF, it was the answer to a prayer. It is likely that Churchill knew the bombing was a mistake, but it didn't matter. An opportunity was handed to him. The following night, a squadron of RAF bombers set out for Berlin. The raid caused minor damage, but it was an embarrassment for Goering, who had once promised that enemy bombers would never reach Berlin. After the raid, Goering promised Hitler that it would never happen again. But it did. For the next four nights, the RAF dropped bombs over the German capital. Churchill was intent on hitting the Germans until the Germans hit back. After the fourth raid against Berlin, Hitler had had enough. He promised to strike at Britain's heart. London was to be destroyed. On September the 7th, British radar detected a massive German formation bubbling up over Calais. The approaching force was so large, RAF commanders were convinced that an airborne invasion was underway. In fact, hundreds of bombers were heading directly for London. The sheer size of the German formation was too much for the RAF. By nightfall, London's East End was in flames. For the next week, German bombers attacked London round the clock. Historic streets, monuments and churches were destroyed. 2,000 civilians were killed and over 10,000 were injured. But the attacks played into the hands of the RAF. While German bombers concentrated on the capital, Fighter Command had time to rebuild. Airfields were repaired and lines of communication were reopened. London's plight was the RAF's reprieve. The tide of battle was again with the British. But Hermann Goering was convinced that Britain was on the verge of collapse. On Sunday, September the 15th, he ordered one last big raid over Britain. He assured his tired airmen that one final blow would knock the British people into submission. The raid involved 400 German bombers 
and over 700 fighters. Once again, the target